Oh, but the fla- killers of the flower moon. 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 Uh, great scheme. Love what they were doing there. <laughs> <laughs> now, did you did you uh, make it before when the, when the trailers were rolling? I did. I saw some hot trailers. I gotta say. Yeah. Did they show the one for Bob Marley? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they did. Now, there's a guy I couldn't give less of a fuck about. <laughs> I couldn't um, agree more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, wow, this is an echo chamber. <laughs> I couldn't care less about... I mean, I appreciated it when I was 19, his music. Yeah, when you're a fucking dirty hippie. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, also, the actor that is playing Bob Marley, uh-huh. every line that he said, I was like, who is this guy? <laughs> Didn't it seem like off? Like it just yeah. It just seemed like they found a guy with dreadlocks, and I'm sure he's a great actor. But the way he delivered it like, everyone it was, was like he was doing a bad impression, a of bad Bob, impression of like Bob. a Rasta guy. Yeah, a Rastafarian. The message is peace. <laughs> <laughs> and then they cut to like crazy. Like it yeah. looks bad. It looks shitty. it looks bad. He's not. In, I'm not interested. I'm not interested either. Why can't they make any since Walk the Line? Mm-hmm. There has not been a single rock group or you know rock star or biopic that has been worth its weight and shit i mean not a single one <laughs> <laughs> they've blown every single one he the even Elton john the one stunk yeah what about the freddie mercury one stunk stunk <laughs> <laughs> garbage hot garbage and that guy well, the the pro- direct- half the problem is is that these guys and their families or whatever reserve all of the like final cut privileges yeah so that you're not getting the real story you're no. just getting like the sugar coated like they show a little bit of his problems, but really in the end he's like a great guy. Right. You know? And yeah. Like Freddie Mercury. I think that was the deal with the Freddie Mercury thing. Because they didn't show all the stuff where like he would have like midgets walking around with parties, like with cocktail platters attached to their head. Oh, is that what he did? <laughs> that's no, just I, the I story heard I heard. That. Yeah. I mean, I think well, he did some time. egregious things. Really? Also. I mean, he's a wild rock star. Well, he had star, to do something know? to get AIDS. Only God yeah. gives yeah. that. <laughs> Listen, I don't think he got AIDS by doing following Christ's way. <laughs> don't say that much. <laughs> but we're not that kind of podcast. <laughs> there's nothing, no, listen, there's no, nothing like wrong Frank with getting AIDS. No, there's nothing wrong with getting AIDS. Yeah. But well, getting, getting rid of it. It's good to throw that out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you should, never, you should never try to get rid of it. Um <laughs> No, but anyway, uh, yeah, they all look. The Bob Marley movie looks bad. Ah, oh, stunk. It looks so bad. It looks horrific. Um, and yeah, they, there's not been a single good. No, but they, star Bob body. Marley just it just. It, first of all, the music it's fine. It's nothing to write home about. <laughs> it's nothing to write home about. <laughs> no, but also, well, I mean, just, at the time, it's pretty unique. No one had heard any rock, like reggae music. Yeah, unless you were. Unless you're uh, from Jamaica or whatever. You're from Jamaica and then you yeah. have these sellouts. <laughs> <laughs> They're like the monkeys of Jamaica. <laughs> it's like, but also, it, it just reminds me of like the most annoying guy I went to high school with. Oh. He would wear a Bob Marley shirt. And- <laughs> yeah, it has been ruined by yeah. its fan base. Yeah. 100% ruined. And that's what I think was triggering and annoying about watching that trailer. Oh, because any, I just imagine anyone who's excited to see that and how much I detest <laughs> that that person. Yeah. <laughs> That's morbid. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm glad we're in agreement. We're in agreement because this is... An echo chamber. An echo chamber. The echo chamber the echo, with echo Joe chamber. and Trent. With Joe and Trent. And welcome back to another hot episode of Echo Chamber. Uh, what do we got today, Trent? What are we going to hear oh, about You're going to go turn by turn? Yeah, but well, let me just, uh, let's just recap what this podcast is for, oh. for our new listeners. And there sure. should be a good new swath of them this week. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we didn't see an uptick in listeners. There's been an uptick. So if you're new to the podcast, I uh, hope you like it. Uh, write in. Tell us what you think. Leave a review. Leave a review. A nice review. Yeah. And thank you for listening. Uh, this is the only podcast where two comedians read the Wall Street Journal because one of them gets it for free from his work. That is correct, sir. <laughs> and, and then we riff and kind of uh, talk about those articles that we're reading in the Wall Street Journal. We are not covering the <laughs> sort of front page uh, no, uh, headlines. No, no. This is more of a... More the feature section. The feature the section. This is yeah. maybe stuff you haven't heard about. Yeah, or stuff that you've thought about, but you didn't know exactly, you know, what are the hard trends behind these things you hear about, or what's actually yeah. happening with this stuff. So I, I call it the important news. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is all other the, stuff, it's non, nonsense. The other news is fleeting. Wars yeah. come and go. Yeah. 
uh, the <laughs> the ongoings of X.com. This yeah. is forever. Formerly Twitter. Formerly Twitter. So what do we got from well, you? Well, we got a kind of a harebrained scheme on how to ban smoking. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, do you want to try? Oh, sure, sure. Uh, and then we also have a harebrained <laughs> uh, job, two job applications for Beyonce and Taylor Swift reporting jobs for USA oh, Today. Wow! Yeah, America's newspaper. It's a it's a new world, and there's uh, new new jobs. <laughs> <laughs> we also have sort of a, a snack. More news in the snack department. Oh my god! They're concerned about the the new weight loss drugs. Mm. So I'll get into that. Yeah, that would fly. Actually, you think that'd be good for snacks because that way people can just freely eat snacks without worrying and then just take weight loss. Well, I have a feeling we'll learn. (laughs) Fair enough. (laughs) Fair enough. And uh, speaking of Hungry Munch Munch, we also have a story about DoorDash and how they have made a fortune wooing hungry video gamers. Mm -hmm. And, and And finally... Uh, nefarious activity at, at your local airport. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> really, uh, that's it. Okay. Yeah, we'll find out more about that. Yeah. <clears throat> Fantastic. So. Now, do you want to start us off, Joe? Well, you've got three. Well, got two, so right. why don't you kick this us is off? Kind of, this is a kind of a quick one. All right, yeah, let's, 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 let's uh, loosen the, the gears up. Uh, Dateline guys. England. <laughs> Dateline England. <laughs> Eventual ban... This is from the Wall Street Journal. Eventual ban on smoking proposed. In England or here? This is Dateline England. <laughs> Not <laughs> New England. <laughs> England. So if it's Dateline England, uh-huh. we're talking about England. We're talking about England. To our U- new listeners. UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak. Could not have guessed that was the Prime Minister of the UK. No, I couldn't either. I thought it was not, still not, Boris. My life was on the line. <laughs> uh... Yeah, I thought it was Boris Johnson, that crazy-haired loon. (laughs) Yeah. But anyway, I guess it's Rishi Sunak, and he's got kind of a harebrained scheme uh, to ban smoking. He proposed raising the legal age that people in England can buy cigarettes by one year every year until it is eventually illegal for the whole population. (laughs) Are you kidding me? No. no. That's insane. So if I'm... If I'm 18 yeah. and he puts it up to 19, yeah. I'll always be one year behind for the rest of my life. Yeah. <laughs> and eventually, so eventually, the entire world, will, <laughs> the entire population of England will, will age out. You'll never live. It'll, be, it'll get up to 1,000 years old before you can legally purchase a cigarette. <laughs> yeah, so I don't understand. So they just have to keep that going. So the legal age at one point will be 110 years old yeah. to buy cigarettes. Yeah. And then, do you think they would face like a counter lawsuit when uh, the the three hundred ten year olds start smoking cigarettes and die immediately? <laughs> well, yeah, one might one might think that, <laughs> but I don't know if this is necessarily a well thought out <laughs> idea. I don't know. Is there any more? Like, is there what do people say about? Well, it? it's really just quotes from this from the UK Prime Minister Sunak said he wanted to stop teenagers taking up cigarettes cigarettes in the first place. Um, because that's what stops <laughs> teens from smoking, the legality. Uh, mm-hmm. It's not like they just get somebody to buy them cigarettes. Listen, or- any teenager, and when I was a teenager, regardless of the age, you find, in this case especially, you find a yeah. nice 78-year-old guy yeah. outside of the gas station. It's called shoulder tapping. You find somebody who's the legal age. Mm-hmm. You go, hey, are you 96? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You have them go and in. each year... Actually, there's going to be a ton of money to make for like 80-year-olds after a while. Once that yeah. number gets up yeah. and the population is so small, they can just go in and buy thousands of cartons, sell them. It's going to make a geriatric cartel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ger- some guy found his retirement fund. A geriatric cigarette cartel yeah. is what they're making. <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. Yeah, you're Who are right. the people that can buy the cigarettes? You no, know, yeah. Um, but it's also, if everybody stops smoking, the the... I, you would assume that the age that people will live to will be longer. So maybe some people might catch up to the... <laughs> some people could catch up. But right now, it's currently illegal for anyone to sell cigarettes or tobacco products to people under 18 years old in the UK, which well, I believe is the same here. It, yeah, it's the same here. Also, if everybody stops smoking, what they fail to realize about this, if you actually make it so that no one can buy cigarettes, uh, then no one would look cool. 
That's true. <laughs> so that'd be a huge problem. Yeah, it would be a huge problem. And England because is already barely scraping onto. They're har- hardly cool. They're hardly cool. There's like a small, like a James Bond portion of the population yeah. that could even pass as cool. S- if you take cigarettes out of his mouth and he just has a martini, yeah, I mean, what do we have left? Right. It sort of died out at the end of the British invasion. Those are the last cool English people I can think of. See, if I was the prime minister, if my name was Raj Shuresh, I would... <laughs> I, hope, I hope I got that right. I don't think I did. Rishi, Rishi Sunak. <laughs> Fuck. He got the first letter right. <laughs> I think Raj Shuresh is actually a comic in New York. Friend of the I show. Think, welcome. Yeah, welcome, so. welcome, welcome anytime. I think you're right. Yeah, he is. He's a good guy. Yeah. Yeah, he's a good um, guy. <laughs> I hope he doesn't see that. Uh, <laughs> I would do the opposite. I would uh, make it a year younger every year. Mm. Until you get to z- till you get to negative one years old. Now, no one born can have cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> or wait a minute. <laughs> Hold on, I have to think it through. Well, a little no, bit more. I think by by that logic, you the uh, an, an expectant mother would have to shove them up her vagina. <laughs> exactly. Um, but uh, you you do raise a good point. Smoking. By all accounts, looks incredibly cool. I think the two coolest things you could ever do is smoke and and litter, which two things you're <laughs> are frowned upon. You think littering is looks cool, oh, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> it's the coolest thing. It depends on who does it because sometimes when somebody litters, I get like irate and want to like yeah, like attack them. Yeah, but uh, there is something when someone doesn't give a fuck to the level. Have you ever seen somebody throw out like a whole bag of KFC out of their window <laughs> on the highway? Yeah, yeah. It's so insane <laughs> that it's almost like the coolest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> the cup and everything just yeah. on the highway, bouncing off, exploding, chicken yeah, flying you're, out. You're, you're walking around with a fucking 64-ounce polar pop. You just <laughs> a big styrofoam cup. You just, you're done with it. You're, it's all ice. You just throw it on the fucking ground and walk away. That's and then you light up the cigarette. <laughs> and then you, you're knee-deep knee in pussy. <laughs> Coolest guy in the world, dude. That's that's the cool. Yeah, the littering, two littering things, is pretty sick, but it's impossibly cool now. It's all frowned upon. Anything cool is frowned upon now. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> see, <laughs> actually, speaking of that, I've got a, I've got an article. Um, uh, you know what? I'm, I'm going to save it, but I, I'll I'll jump into this. All right. <laughs> Sorry. Well, um, that's what we call in the business call a teaser. That's a little teaser for the next episode. Mm. Tune in next week to find something that's someone related to that. Um, anyway, but what we have right now, um, this is cool for a lot of people. To me, it's the lamest thing I've ever heard of in my life. <laughs> sure. But this is from the Wall Street Journal. Okay. <clears throat> Headline here is... Nearly 1,000 people apply for Beyonce and Taylor Swift reporting jobs. USA Today parent Gannett, I think it's the company, defends hiring plans, quote, this is how we save local journalism. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so Lexi... And that's something we need to save. <laughs> that's something we need to save <laughs> by any means necessary. <laughs> Lexi Thompson recently took a dip in her parents' swimming pool. Not to lounge and relax, but as part of her application to become a newspaper reporter. Of course. Quote, I'm not going to tell all of you guys at USA Today why I would be an amazing Taylor Swift. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to tell all of you why I'd be an amazing Taylor Swift reporter, Thompson says in a video. As the camera zooms in on her, resting arms <clears throat> resting arms flat on the edge of a pool. A shot reminiscent of Reese Witherspoon in Legally Blonde. I think we can all picture that. <laughs> <laughs> and what's your character? He's unnatural. What's your character? Elle Woods submits a video essay to into Harvard. Uh huh. USA Today parent Gannett made headlines earlier this month when it posted two unusual jobs: Taylor Swift and Beyonce reporters. In about two weeks, the publisher received close to a thousand applications for the jobs, including from Emmy award-winning journalists. Uh, an influencer whose Beverly Hills agent reached out about the job, and a reporter who currently works at the White House. Oh, good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. Let's talk about so a these of people. Pace. They're kind of. It's like, from what I gather so far, these people. She's kind of auditioning. It's they're treating journalism like a reality TV show now. They're kind of auditioning. Well, I mean, that's sort of uh, an indictment of what they're trying to do, really, <laughs> which is save local journalism <laughs> sure also, but i don't ha- understand what part of it is local at all <laughs> I, they only covered taylor swift when she comes to town <laughs> they only 
come in the two most global <laughs> pop stars of all time. Yeah, I don't understand Local that. Local journalism, they act like they're talking about like uh, what's going on in the food kitchen down the street or at the, <laughs> at the, at the local yeah. government house. Yeah. What's down at the local watering hole? They're following the glib fucking in and out. The two most famous people in the world. Who also, by the way, need no further coverage. Yeah, we get it. We get it. Also, no one's asleep at the wheel. No. It's not like anyone is like, damn, if only we could be on this story a little sooner. I wonder what what Taylor Swift is up to. What is she doing right now? (laughs) What's she doing now? So, how, but does it explain what 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 does this entail, and how does it save the local local journalists? <laughs> well, we'll get into it. All right. <laughs> Taylor Swift Beyonce postings provoked eye rolls from some corners of social media. It's kind of odd. Odd. You think that someone would treat something like that with respect and, <laughs> and admiration? Very serious. Was some, was some wondering if the jobs were even real? <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> Which is crazy. Obviously, yeah. these are real jobs. They also drew plenty of ire, especially from local journalists whose industry has been getting gashed by layoffs. Yeah. Gannett, the country's largest local news publisher with hundreds of newspapers, laid off around 600 employees last year alone. Well, this here's, here's a, 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 an issue I have, Joe, is local news should be owned... Locally, <laughs> not by some <laughs> fucking asshole, massive conglomerate yeah, that owns yeah. every little. Yeah, I know it's yeah, fucked up. Yeah, and then they all slip in a little piece because they're all being backed by one party or the other. Right, you know, lobbyists. Yeah, and they go, let's slip in the six hundred newspapers scattered across the country. Yeah, something where every forty-nine-year-old lady is going to read in the morning. I, I I hate to say this, but it's almost an echo chamber. <laughs> it's a bit of an echo chamber. I don't really feel like you're getting... And plus, you know, if these are all locally, independently owned news outlets from different small markets around the country, yeah. you'd get a variety of nuanced opinions about Taylor Swift and Beyonce. Right. Now, they're just going to have the same... You know, this is local journalism we're talking about. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm, I, it is local. Well, according to the article, it's local journalism. I still can't <laughs> so really wrap my head around wrap what, my how head it is. <laughs> Here's what somebody wrote. At Gannett, you're the problem. It's you. I agree with this. Yeah. Wrote, uh, New York News Guild, a journalist union on X, the platform formerly known as Twitter. Oh, <laughs> is that what X is? Yes, I didn't know that. In a nod to Taylor Swift's best known lyrics. Oh, she yeah. says something. Hey, I'm. It's I'm me. the problem. I'm the problem. And yeah. I think it is. <laughs> no, you know, Just based on I think it is. everything I I've heard about her. She says that uh, sarcastically. We should, we should kind of If listen. anyone, if I have to hear about any individual every day for some reason, and I don't care about them innately, <laughs> then yeah, you are the problem. <laughs> Taylor Swift, for four years, Donald Trump. Yeah. Um, who is now the, the solution, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And perhaps she'll move to that space too. Um, <laughs> Kristen Roberts, who recently became the Dannett Media Chief Content Officer, said the publisher has hired 260 journalists and is filing for more than 100 more open roles since she took over. She also said that the Taylor Swift Beyonce jobs are expected to generate revenue for the broader business, including local newsrooms. This is how we save local journalism. She said, This is what we need to do. If successful, Gannett may create similar roles covering other personalities and popular topics, she said. The backlash against Gannett also drew its own backlash, with culture critics saying hard news types should get off their high horse. Others on social media (laughs) mused about what life and the job might be like, including having to pay attention to football in the wake of her newfound companionship with the NFL's Travis Kelsey. Oh, are they dating? Uh, I'm not sure. I'd have to look into that. (laughs) Maybe I can follow one of these local news operations owned by them. Uh, Gannett requires applicants to have a serious journalistic chops. Yeah, okay. On top of five years of journalism experience, both postings said candidates need to have firm command of associated press style. So this is big, Trent. Not Mm. only do you need to know about Taylor Swift and Beyonce, but you need to be literate. (laughs) (laughs) Big criteria. Big criteria. So not just anybody. Well, So you could throw out about 900 of those 1,000 job applicants. (laughs) It's just, it's incredible to me that this is how we find the next Walter Cronkite. (laughs) (laughs) Well, one applicant said, this isn't just a celebrity who's really good at what she does. This is the story of a business. But even then, it's not like anybody, it's not like you have one Disney reporter. (laughs) Right, yeah. I don't know. It's it's this stupid. I, I don't 
I don't know. I, I think, think I think Gannett is a terrible organization. Should be oh, disbanded. It's evil. And everyone it's evil in its incarnate. corporate office should be shot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you can say that. <laughs> wow. Well, uh, uh, <laughs> I don't want to do this, another yeah. Charlie Hebdo on her. No, 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 no. I forgot no. that we shouldn't say that on this. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a call to action. It's, not, it's definitely not a call to But action. I do think, but just based solely off this, is, if this is, if covering, if, if we need... Uh, w- one person in every major city to cover Taylor Swift and Beyonce to save local journalism. Uh, maybe it's not worth saving. Let it perish. <laughs> <laughs> let it, oh, yeah, let it let go it. the way of the horse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's done. Stick a fork in it. Some things it's aren't done. Worth, worth saving. Yeah, yeah. So, well, <sighs> if you're looking for a job, there you go. And you know, and you know how to type. <laughs> <laughs> you know to use grammar. Yeah, so that's like maybe one one person in the world now. <laughs> one person left that yeah. knows how to type and use There you go. Uh, that job. Well, geez, that's... I just... I, 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 I understand what they're talking about, but I also don't. I, I just... I can't wrap my head around that story. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't understand. I just don't how understand it. how there's any longevity to. Obviously, they've had their careers have had longevity, but like, yeah. If I hired somebody for that role, I get she's overly mind blowingly popular right now. Yeah, you know. Yeah. If I hire somebody for that role and she even falls out of like the headlines for a couple of weeks, yeah, I'm walking to the office every day glaring at that fucking idiot I hired. <laughs> like, yeah, it seems like a, a role that you regret having created six yeah. months in. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like hiring. Also, yeah, none of your coworkers would have any respect for you. I'm the local you, Taylor Swift reporter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you, yeah, you sit at the, the cubicle next to the guy covering the war in Afghanistan. Yeah, <laughs> a gruesome, gruesome double murder yeah, down yeah. on Main Street. This guy's covering the the Ukraine invasion. <laughs> he sits right next to the Taylor Swift yeah. reporter. Yeah. yeah, and and one yeah one talking about Israel and Palestine, and the other is. Uh, Taylor's relationship with Travis Kelsey very nuanced (laughs) and she's going hey I'm gonna go grab a a cappuccino do you want anything he's like no I'm actually a little bit slammed right now (laughs) (laughs) have fun (laughs) yeah I have to write about somebody raping babies Um, (laughs) anyway also before we proceed I would like to redact a comment I made earlier about about the corporate office (laughs) get it I said some things in jest that I, I didn't actually mean. <laughs> I don't yeah, condone this is violence a com- on anybody. A comedy podcast yeah. and everything we say. I would say they should all take a shot of vodka. <laughs> Have a big party. Yeah. Go see the Eras concert tour and film. Oh, by the way, mm. speaking of that, yeah. last night, Killers of the Flower Moon, I went and saw it. Yeah. Incredible. And every quiet moment in the oh, theater next the same to same issue. The theater next to us was the fucking Eras tour. Yeah. And every quiet moment in the movie was... <laughs> I, I had the exact... <laughs> yeah. And I was like, are you fucking... He's taking me right out of the movie. Yeah. Hey, I had the exact same issue. And you know what I said? I said, everybody in that movie theater should be shot. <laughs> Oh, never in my life did I wish a guy in orange hair walked into the fucking movie theater. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway. Oh, man. <laughs> well, a couple of episodes ago, we talked about Smucker <laughs> acquiring Hostess Food Brands. Well, that may have been a mistake, Joe, because there's a new weight loss drug oh, sweeping no. the nation. Oh, my God. This is uh, from the Wall Street Journal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Now, you've heard of Ozempic. You know the drug Ozempic? I, I have heard about it, yeah. Sort of the new uh, hot weight loss drug on the market. Yeah, Ozempic. I, I usually crush up a couple and store them before I, before I go out. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, sna- this is a headline. Snack companies confront the Ozempic era. This is from the Wall Street this Journal? This is from the Wall Street Journal. Oh, okay. You just started taking Ozempic. Will you still crave that bag of potato chips? <laughs> uh, big food companies and investors are watching as Ozempic and other new weight loss drugs flow to millions of people, upending America's diet industry and raising new questions about how consumers will eat. Executives at food manufacturers from Campbell's Soup to ConAgra. 
Campbell's Soup. Said they are fielding. Well, Campbell's Soup. Uh, all these companies, you think they just do one thing. Right. But, but they all own. I was going to say, because I was like, Campbell's Soup, really, I feel like their clientele isn't the people taking the weight loss drugs. <laughs> well, Food pantries and shit. <laughs> <laughs> we really are hungry. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But at Campbell Soup, they also make uh, delicious, go- <laughs> delicious goldfish crackers. They're fucked. Yeah, you know those <laughs> goldfish. Every girl that takes weight loss drugs, they don't like. They them do. They, um, Girls love goldfish. They they do. It's well, it's the snack that smiles back. <laughs> Ladies love it. Um, but they're they're worried. They're they're facing questions from investors about dr- the drug's potential impact. As internal teams start to assess consumer behavior and brainstorm ways to respond, the drugs which suppress patients' appetites have exploded in popularity in the U.S., straining manufacturing capacity. Morgan Stanley has projected that 24 million people, or nearly 7% of the U.S. population, will be taking such medications by year 2035. Wow. That's wild. It is wild. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And now, are there any negative side effects to this medication? Oh, funny you should mention that. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that's mentioned on the next page here. <laughs> Besides, obviously, it could be dangerous to not have an appetite, right? I don't know. That could be... A so, lot of this, much like uh, everything now, it doesn't always seem to be well thought out. Well, people... They you, can't think into the future. Well, you have a business idea, and you go, oh, my God, we're going to make a million dollars in five minutes. Yeah. And then you race, and then you do that, and then you go, oh, my God, fuck, everyone, we created a new crisis. Yeah. Well, some people report experiencing unpleasant side effects, such as nausea and diarrhea. Cause it is, that's because you're only having seltzer water, and you're not eating any food. It's also, <laughs> it's also nausea still and diarrhea on its own? unclear which foods patients may opt to eat while taking the drugs. Um, Sounds like none. But we know a guy. I'm not going to mention his name. But we know a guy that's on Ozempic. And uh, I, we, uh, he's a comic. I think I know who it is. <laughs> and uh, and, and uh, we were in a big group talking. And he goes, yeah, I'm on Ozempic. And he, uh, another guy asked, are you worried about any side effects? And he goes, no, nah, I mean, what's the worst that could happen? I have side effects, and then I sue the company. And I go, I don't know if that's the worst thing that could happen. <laughs> that's, that's like best case scenario. Yeah, that's the best. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's way worse things. Yeah, yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> so gonna, I don't know. How about permanent loss of vision? <laughs> or life. about that? You could sue them, sure. <laughs> you need somebody to fill out the forms for you. <laughs> yeah, or yeah, loss, loss of life. Your family might benefit. I don't know if you will. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to take a life insurance yeah. claim out on this idiot. But uh, so this is... I just like this. All these names, they always sound made up. This this one's a good one. Carolyn McBain Waldo. Nah! <laughs> <laughs> said like a she, Batman villain. Yeah. Said she is eating significantly less since she started taking Eli Lilly's Manjaro. Her family orders from restaurants left less often, and their grocery bills have dropped by as much as 20%. The 50-year-old who works as a senior director in retail said the drug makes her feel more feel full more quickly and that she is far less likely to overeat when stressed quote i still have a fully stocked kitchen there's chips and pretzels in there (laughs) they're just all expired (laughs) but i don't find it tempting yeah they're all expired well here's what i say in defense of this drug Mm. um is it such a crime given our insane obesity epidemic and the poisonous snacks that have been forced upon us that people are not overeating. I don't think it's a crime. No, I think it's maybe a, maybe a great thing. Maybe there's maybe they're pulling be a, good, a world out of a, a crisis. It might be a good thing, but I also drugs are scary though. Drugs are scary, and I scary. I feel like I tend to question more than the average bear when it <laughs> when it comes to drugs. Uh, <laughs> You sure do. Uh, so I think trip maybe straight edge. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I think there's maybe. There, I, I have a feeling that in 10 years, th- there's going to be horrible, horrible reactions and side effects to, to Maybe. This. Here's what I, I do know. Whether mm. this one is so bad on its own or not, the making it common to just be on another medication when so many people are already on 
Adderall. Yeah. Anti-anxiety medication. Yeah. Antidepressants. At a certain point, you're so drug addled, all of these things combobulating together. Yeah. For so that you can be smile and, and, and be thin and hot at all times. Yeah. That's not life. No. Life is eating potato chips and being depressed. <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah, need it, raw. you need a raw dog live with Doritos right. and Oreos. Yeah, until you depression. Until you reach an early grave. Yeah, and if you're sad, that's why you drink alcohol. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but but I would never do drugs. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just mask my pain with spicy sweet chili Doritos. <laughs> um, Doritos Locos Tacos. But snack companies, they're, they're concerned about this because it could eat into their bottom line. Well, I think if anybody's bottom line needs to be eaten into, it's these evil bastards pumping Dorito dust down our throats yeah. and giving us all diabetes. But uh, uh, here's, here's an interesting uh, statement, Joe. This uh, a report said goods such as candy are about one-third of... Si- or, hold on. The, the Trend? People- <laughs> Trent? <laughs> I'm having a stroke. Uh, Did you take your Ozempic today? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, uh, hold on, let me just read this whole... Just paragraph. read the whole chunk. Give yeah. me the chunk. Wall Street has been trying to protect the drug's impact on sales for food and beverage makers, restaurants, and grocery stores. Among food companies, snack and candy ma- manufacturers such as Hershey... Mandela's hostess, which we mentioned in a previous episode, and Campbell may be most exposed as patients cut back most on foods that are high in sugar and fat, such as cookies and salty snacks, Morgan Stanley said. A Bernstein report said goods such as candy, where about one-third of sales are to people who consume the product at least once a day, could be most at risk. How often... A third of... People who buy candy eat it well, at least eat it once a day. Every day? Yeah. Jesus. Wow. That's shocking, actually. I, I thought so as well. Who's eating candy every day besides a child? Someone with a notorious sweet tooth. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it sounds like this drug is saving a lot of lives from it's diabetes saving. and... The sugar and uh, sodium epidemic. One, yeah, one lady said she got full after eating a single jelly bean. See, so that's that's dangerous. that's not good. <laughs> that's not good. Yeah, yeah. Ronald Reagan will be rolling in his grave if he heard that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. It seems that there's a lot of pros in it, the, but there's also a lot of cons. I think that's uh, where we cons. where we end on that story. Well, I hate <laughs> to see some of my favorite companies lose some profit share. Yeah. So I, it would be nice if. But at the same time, they need to respect our need to, to lose weight and not be fat pieces of shit. I think it'd be nice if anybody on Ozempic who's losing this weight, not buying as many Doritos and Hostess and things like that, would still contribute the same amount of money they would spend towards the company and maybe sort of a indirect yeah, maybe just donation. A, yeah, and a donation. Yeah, yeah. An anonymous donation. Anonymous donation. I like to give back to the corporations. Who make <laughs> well, they need it. And, they, and we support it. it. And, and I love uh, Hostess, and so, uh, people need to eat snacks. Their bottom line is my bottom line. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. <clears throat> well, speaking of snacks, Trent, mm. speaking of yummy, yummy, yum yums, I'll, I wish I didn't say that, but I did. There's, there's, no, there's, <laughs> sure. no, there's no one doing it now. <laughs> this is from the Wall Street Journal. Okay. Headline, DoorDash, who's hungry video gamers? Who's hungry video gamers? DoorDash. Play, players do a lot of sitting but still need to eat. Now, you won't find any of these folks taking Ozempic because <laughs> think about the people who take Ozempic. Uh-huh. You wanna, is that what it's called? Ozempic, you, yes. Ozempic. They want to go out and look their best, right? Sure. sure. I'm these, sure it's um, also a health issue. Maybe a health issue. Yeah, but, definitely both. Yeah. These folks, they're mm-hmm. not leaving the house, Trent. They're, Their body appearance doesn't matter because no. they are living in a virtual world. The, the metaverse. The metaverse of video games. <laughs> <laughs> Food delivery companies enjoyed breakneck expansion during the pandemic and then confronted a slowdown as the country started venturing out again. So DoorDash, the nation's biggest of them, yeah. turned to a group that still sometimes, <laughs> that sorry, sometimes still behaves like it's stuck in the lockdown. 
<laughs> people who spend hours a day playing video games. Uh-huh. There might not be a more perfect consumer for companies that bring food to your door. Consumers mm. who crave that triple whopper, but who out of... <laughs> <laughs> who out of I don't know why they had... <laughs> It's like paid product placement. Yeah. But out of button mashing <laughs> obsession or loyalty or loyalty to their to their band of online peers would rather not abandon their console to feed themselves. Ugh. Sick fucks. <laughs> <laughs> Depraved souls. To woo this community of highly competitive shut ins. <laughs> It's just them talking down. It's the, the, everything These they say. These fucking people, they shut ins, they eat triple whoppers for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> to woo the shut in losers locked in their holes. No. To Wouldn't woo- you hate to have your p- face in this article? <laughs> <laughs> this poor lady. Yeah, there's just one picture of a random lady. <laughs> She's smiling. She couldn't be happier. She's. I'm gonna be in the wall. She's telling all her entire yeah. family. I'm gonna be in the Wall Street uh, Journal. <laughs> then they call her a fucking shut in. <laughs> Only <laughs> eats Burger King. <laughs> Triple Whopper wearing <laughs> shut in fuck. <laughs> oh, man. So here's what DoorDash has done. They started showing up to video game conferences. They streamed video battles conferences. between popular gamers and deployed ads with such catchphrases as stay in your game. Jesus. <laughs> a straightforward way to remind <laughs> players that every minute saved in acquiring food is another minute spent battling the enemy to pixels. Oh, my God. Blasting the enemy. Yeah. The result? Video gamers are now DoorDash's fast and growing pool of customers. And among its most frequent users, the company says, wow. more than 12 million people who spent at least an hour a day gaming ordered from the app in the last three months through June. Wow. Gamers who ordered 70% more than the regular DoorDash users help lift the company's order frequency to a record high this year. Wow. It's crazy. That is wild. It is wild. But these people, they, they, it's also it makes sense because really the gamers they don't have to leave the house anymore. You used to be you have to go to GameStop if you wanted to buy a video game. You had to go and get the <laughs> the disc. You had to line up at midnight. Yeah, you used to have some semblance of a normal member of society. Yeah. <laughs> but now you just now that's all been eradicated <laughs> it's gone <laughs> through the wonders of technology the, the wonders that's exactly how I would describe it you can it. be a disgusting pig <laughs> shut in <laughs> cause now you just download the game which I didn't realize you download the game you download KFC yeah it all just shows up <laughs> DoorDash should go a step further and have a service where they put the food in your mouth <laughs> yeah they chew it up and spit it they in your mouth they chew it up and spit it so you're you're playing the video game and they go yeah, and they bird feed it into your mouth. But gaming helps. Then they can helps caress your it. sides until you shit it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, they, the the uh, 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 I wish I could think of a toilet brand company. Oh, couldn't tell you. Cigna. Cigna. That's, that's that sounds health, right. Health insurance. Kohler. Kohler. I think that's one. Okay. They should team up with DoorDash and the video <laughs> game and sort of make a video game toilet chair. It could be in, 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 well, you never have to get off your in, ass. Into yeah. end consumer fulfillment. Yeah. 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 <laughs> toilet seat chair. <laughs> if DoorDash come, you have a guy put the food in your mouth. Yeah. And um, he does this. He, he yeah. goes up and down <laughs> with your chin so you help masticate. You got to masticate. Well, as given with DoorDash's great success in doing this, mm-hmm. you can imagine the rivals. Oh, well, wow. it's a lot of sleepless nights. Yeah, DoorDash is seamless and seamless. <laughs> and that's important to know that. <laughs> But rival Uber Eats. Oh, rival Uber Eats, the arch enemy of DoorDash. Uber Eats. It targeted gamers before the pandemic wow. and recently accelerated its efforts. This summer, the company created a video game character named Orderin. Orderin, as in order in. Yeah, I got it. The muscle bound <laughs> Orderin is part of the popular World of Warcraft game. Is that still popular? His job is to deliver virtual food. Jesus Christ. <laughs> We've lost our way. <laughs> with, with each virtual order, gamers receive a real life Uber Eats discount code. Gamers are har- a hard work quote this is a quote. Gamers are a hard working and hard ordering audience can't, for Uber Eats. Can't said th- spokeswoman Megan Casterly. Uh, they're also not hard working. <laughs> yeah. Well, unless we've changed the definition of hard work, I couldn't think of <laughs> less. Well, or the definition of work. <laughs> <laughs> Forget hard or yeah. easy work. And what is hard ordering? I, I mean, you just smash the it's buttons hard, as fast as you hard hard as you can. Fast food workers to fulfill these orders. Yeah, because you got to fucking put the KFC in their mouth yeah. and gobble it up for them. 
DoorDash has even asked gamers to consider becoming delivery drivers. And what Fat ad- chance. It po- yeah, I know. <laughs> It points, it points out that navigating busy streets and addresses can be as thrilling as a video game. Wow. It's like Getting out of the house could be as almost as thrilling as <laughs> staying inside. Yeah. A- uh, Adams, and this is a uh, consumer, developed a sense of loyalty to DoorDash because it was one of few brands that repeatedly show up to gaming events. It, quote, <laughs> it actually felt like they cared. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, Newsflash. They, they don't. don't. <laughs> <laughs> wow. If I had a sense of More. loyalty to a, a company, I, I'd put a real gun in my mouth. <laughs> Not a virtual one. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I would pull the very non-virtual trigger. <laughs> Adams, <laughs> Adams, who manages a design firm, I don't know how she manages anything, spends at least 15 hours a week streaming herself playing Final Fantasy 14 with friends. She likes joking with her followers and, quote, being a clown. Yeah, that's about right. A clown. Quote, I want to focus on my hobbies, Adam says. And food delivery, quote, has, funnily enough, as they say, helped me stay in the game. She now orders burgers, chicken wings, and other things about three times a week and will soon be on Ozempic. (laughs) She's supporting another clown, Ronald McDonald. (laughs) Hey, it's good to help a fellow clown. Yeah. Well, speaking of hard workers and hard ordering <laughs> uh, this is from the wall street journal huh, okay. criminals infiltrate workforce at airports jesus christ yeah that sounds dangerous it's, well it's wild it's kind of a wild story in uh, a restroom this is something sorry. straight out of, out of hollywood <laughs> so is that what it says no <laughs> that's what i said. that would be the funniest first line <laughs> in our, this is something like straight out of hollywood <laughs> <laughs> the editor's like, hey, Michael, I don't know if you should... I don't know if this is the right way into the story. <laughs> Maybe you should be color, co- covering think, Taylor Swift. Think about it. <laughs> <laughs> in a restroom, think about it. <laughs> in a restroom stall in the departure hall of St. Thomas Airport in the U.S. Virgin Islands. The U.S. Virgin Islands. A recently hired worker waited in January with two taped up bricks of cocaine until he heard the signal. Stomping and knocking. That's the signal. Okay. The airport worker reached down and passed the packages weighing a total of nearly five pounds under the partition, separating him from the adjoining stall. His accomplice, whose face he wasn't meant to see, stuffed them into a red backpack to take with him on a Spirit Airlines flight to Orlando, Florida. This is like right out of Hollywood. (laughs) (laughs) Funny you should mention that. Uh, both, both, Both were apprehended before the accomplice could board his flight. Odd. Court documents show that the worker, who had been with Hyannis, Massachusetts-based Cape Air for less than a year, was set to make two thousand dollars for getting the drugs into the departure hall. That's not a lot of money for like a federal crime. No, it's not. He probably should have negotiated a little better. <laughs> yeah, two thousand dollars. But I don't know how much the airport's paying him. Could be low. Sounds Could, like not much. Yeah. But I tell you, two bricks of cocaine maybe probably worth a lot more than that. Probably a lot, uh, but maybe he just he's just doing it for the thrill of it. Maybe he's down on his luck. He could be a down on his luck airport worker. <laughs> okay. Is there anything also, wouldn't that be a nightmare to work at the airport? Oh, couldn't think of anything I'd rather do less. Yeah. I had a, I had a, a good friend, dear friend, comedian, and uh Aaron Naylor, friend of the show, mm, yes. welcome anytime. Worked in an airport for like ninety years. Uh, no, he worked there for like eight years, but he was not in. He wasn't like in security or anything. Yeah, that would is. be terrible. He was out like waving the things around, doing that shit. Oh, that'd be and that of, sounds kind of nice. That'd yeah. be kind of fun and let, until you screw up one time. And, <laughs> you and you play to your airplanes, airplanes, airplanes to, landing and taking off the same the place. Air. But apparently, that's uh, uh, crashing in. Uh, uh, we'll get in uh, collisions at uh, at airports have been on the rise. Um, but anyway, the incident is among a spate of criminal activity since the recovery in air travel that has involved so-called airport insiders, those who have access to areas that for passengers would require security checks or be off limits. As air travel rebounds from its pandemic hibernation, the aviation industry has grappled with widespread disruption, near collisions of aircrafts, and rising workplace injury. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You know, I saw there was an article about like a couple near misses or something like at the New Orleans airport. There was like a planes landed and like like one, like two seconds after the other one in the same spot. Yeah. 
I don't know what's going on anymore. I, I thought we had this all Well, figured. I was worried about AI, but now I can't wait for it to hurry up and replace us because we clearly are not cut out to manage ourselves We're anymore. We're not cut out, but also I don't know if this cut out. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> We're fucked. Yeah. All to say, we're fucked. It's all for But now. this is interesting. They say that the easiest way to rob a bank is to get a job at the bank. Yeah. So that seems to be the method here with the airport criminals. Perhaps it is. Perhaps so. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's also, rest, uh, airports are also wrestling with a growing threat of criminal gangs. <laughs> gangs? <laughs> recruiting airport workers. <laughs> There's airport gangs? <laughs> They're recruiting airport workers to do drug deals and sex trafficking and all. It's a nightmare out there, Joe. Jesus. Uh, wait, wait, wait. So what does that mean, the gangs infiltrate the airports? Well, much like this. That uh, the, I assume a oh, gang... Oh, they just solicited that guy. Yeah. To, okay. Who was probably a, like a... Sorry, G- I just pictured that they were in the terminal, like <laughs> like down by like the uh, pretzel yeah, station. Yeah, they all have blue bandanas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No. But they just kind of hung out there. <laughs> <laughs> a very yeah. simple image of how gangs work. <laughs> no, no, they're recruiting uh, like that guy was probably a janitor or something, and and so he could get in. To yeah, the, he must be pretty low paid for yeah. two grand. Um, airport workers are particularly attractive recruits for criminal organizations. Experts point to examples where baggage handlers have been recruited to shift contraband filled su- filled suitcases from international flights onto domestic carousels, bypassing checks by custom security. Runway workers have been tasked with planting narcotics in the panels of aircrafts. Jesus. And custom uh, customs officials have been paid to wave through bags known to contain illicit items. Where the, While there has always been some degree of threat posed by insiders, experts said the mass hiring after the pandemic has given criminal entities the chance to plant or recruit new accomplices. It's almost like our entire reaction to the pandemic is wrong. <laughs> it's like we got everything wrong. We got everything. We got it all wrong, <laughs> except for DoorDash. <laughs> they fucking crushed it. Yeah, DoorDash, yeah. and uh, you know, why don't they just? I mean, it's it's, it's never-ending battle with cocaine and stuff getting smuggled in the country. Just legalize it, and here's what you do: you legalize cocaine, and then every year you make the age limit. <laughs> Yeah. One year older. It's a brilliant. It's kind of a foolproof. It's a plan. foolproof plan. One yeah. of the greatest leaders of the modern day uh, R- country, R- R- Reginald Chiraki. Ch- Reginald Chiraki. Rishi Shun- Shunak. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's probably a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Because so. this isn't. I mean, the the. Uh, now I hate to say this, but I think the war on drugs has been a failure. <laughs> And you'd hate to see something that our favorite president, <laughs> Ronald Reagan, started doing and didn't work out. Yeah. But. Ronald Reagan, if he listens, if he were alive to listen to this episode, uh, he'd, he'd, be, be, he'd be irate. Uh, People are eating single jelly beans and, <laughs> and, and smuggling drugs. And they're still all smuggling throughout drugs. throughout this great nation. And uh, despite his wife's war on drugs, the BJ queen herself, Nancy Reagan. <laughs> the throat go. Yeah. The war rages on. Yep. Um, wow. Not all crime committed by insiders is orchestrated by external groups. In July, three TSA security officers at Miami International Airport were caught on uh, CCTV palming items <laughs> from hand luggage bins into their pockets. Footage shows the workers allegedly stealing $600 in cash and other high-value goods from passengers' bags as they adjusted items in trays before sending them through x-ray machines. Oh, wow. That's, it, that's now, like you're going to immediately it, get caught, I feel like, doing that. Well, yeah, and that's kind of a shame because if you think of a trust, we, someone I trust with my life, a TSA agent. <laughs> <laughs> Those yeah. people seem to have a good head. On their shoulders. Yeah, exactly. I just, I, I have so much loyalty yeah, to them. You can't trust the TSA. I mean, I, I, I mean, who can you trust? Who's left? I mean, I guess the folks at, you know, Uber Eats and they sort of gain my loyalty over the <laughs> Or your the local, the pandemic. local newspaper's Taylor Swift reporter. Yeah, I mean, I, lo- I trust my local <laughs> news provider, which is owned by a massive multi-million <laughs> global conglomerate of local newspapers. Oh, man. <clears throat> Well, it sounds like after this episode of Echo Chamber that the world is in a good place and yeah. some things are getting better. 
the local journalism has been saved. They're, crack- <laughs> they're cracking down on drug smuggling. We're losing weight. We're losing weight. And our food has never been more convenient. Yeah. I think maybe that's how we, this is how we should end every episode with the positive <laughs> the, pro- the, the positive spin. From the news. It's so easy Wait, to find it, the negative. Yeah, it's so easy to be negative. It's easy to be a downer when everything is sort of But a, you look at it, we're a drug free thin. <laughs> <laughs> well, hot. we're a certain drug free if not and we're thin on account of other drugs. You gotta have some drugs. You gotta win some and you lose some. Yeah, yeah. A, win some, lose some. But one one day, smoking will be eradicated. <laughs> one day, <laughs> that's the craziest plan ever. I mean, people but it's had just to have so ridiculed crazy them. It, it just might work. Why not just say it's completely illegal? Because they got to want to wane everybody off it. I guess they want to wane everybody off it. Wean, wane. I think they both work. Really, one's banned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one's banned, and one is. Uh, a, a name. It? it could be a first name. It could be a last name. It could be a first name. It's also a Mike Myers character. Yep. <laughs> Party on. <laughs> Party on. And that's what our listeners should do. <laughs> Party that's on. What our listeners should should do. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Any any closing thoughts? Any anything? Any plugs? We got any exciting things coming up? The Lord knows when this one will be out. So I guess. No. I guess we'll just say stay tuned for the next episode. Stay tuned for the next episode. Leave a review. Leave a review uh, and tell uh, your friends about this. Yeah, subscribe, rate, review, all that. And as always, party on, Joe. <laughs> party on. I'm Joe Dunnick signing off, and I'm Trent Mavery signing off. We'll see you next week. Uh, bye bye. <laughs>